Hello, uh, this is the video presentation for real-time end-to-end video anomaly detection paper accepted to WECV 24. So <clears throat> let's start off with describing the problem. So video anomaly detection, um, we deal with, uh, we dealt with weekly labeled anomaly detection in this paper, now, which has a few key challenges. So first of all, the data is weekly labeled, so we do not have specific labels for each frame. So although we do know which of the videos may have an anomaly, but we don't know where is the anomaly localized. So that's the challenge that we need to solve. Other than that, we have high variance in data. The data is distributed among many different classes like robbery, arson, arrest, abuse, and several other classes. And the data is heavily skewed because there's a lot more normal data than there is anomalous data. So having all these challenges, how do we go about this problem? To understand this, you first need to look at what previously the existing literature has been doing. So we usually have features that are extracted from a feature extractor, such as I3D or some kind of transformer. And we refine those features by passing those features through a feature aggregator. Most common feature aggregator used in this field is the NTN network. And then we would use some kind of classifier like the S3R or the NDFN, like based on magnitudes or some dictionaries. And we would refine those features and use a classifier and give predictions. So what if we could just directly train the feature extractor itself on the anomaly data instead of extracting features? What, we, what if we could train everything end to end? Uh, so that can have several advantages, such as speed and data efficiency. Um, <clears throat> also, we could expect to see a bump in accuracy since we are using all the layers inside a feature extractor. Um, so what are the problems when we try to train something end to end? In this, re this research, research has been um, dependent a lot on metric learning losses. So metric learning losses basically require several segments of anomalous data and nominal data to be trained together so that the network can differentiate between the two patterns. Now, feature aggregation also requires a full length of video to be input at once so that it can basically separate anomalous features uh, from the nominal features and refine those features to be more distinct. These are two challenges that prevent us from using feature aggregation and metric learning losses when training end to end. So the way we overcome this is by fixing a, a decision period. So we take in an input video for just 6.4 seconds and just looking at 6.4 seconds of a video, a model should tell us, should tell us if there's an anomaly in that time period. So we see that our method only looks at 6.4 seconds of a, uh, of a video and already outperforms most of the available models at that decision period by a significant margin. So how do we come by this? Uh, <clears throat> we use a very simple technique where we take the whole of the nominal data set and compute the KNN distances for all of the anomalous data set. And we use a smoothing mechanism, which is basically assuming that anomalies do occur in consecutive segments so which is basically a fair uh, assumption because we know that once an anomaly is happening it's going to happen in a chunk of time together rather than sporadically so it's going to smooth out the values and then we use those canon distances for initial selection and then on that selection we train an mlp and based on the that mlp's uh, inference on all of training set, we de we determine pseudo labels that we would further use to train the feature extractor itself. So once we have the pseudo labels at the end, we would just use the pseudo labels to train the feature extractor directly. Now we use a modern transformer architecture uh, so that it can learn those intricacies better, and we see. Uh, that uh, the performance is much better on shorter decision periods, especially you can see the performance is much better 
at a 6.4 decision period met as compared to 8.53 on other methods. Uh, when considering both feature structures, transformer-based uniformer and I2D. Um, you, you can also see the result on XD violence. So this was UCF crime. On XD violence, we see a similar, similar performance boost on small decision periods. So uh, this is going to be uh, a small example of the predictions produced by our model compared to the actual ground truth. So you can see here on this XD violence anomaly video, the predictions are pretty much close to um, the ground truth. And this is what it looks like yeah, in UCF crime. So that's going to be all from my side. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for the presentation. And see you guys.